Have you ever wished you could add overridable default values to Google Sheets? So in this example, I'm going to show you how to add values and if you delete it, it resets back to the original. And so then you can also select a product and do the same thing. And if you go back and delete, it'll reset back to that original value. All right, so let's jump right in. So I don't have any formulas in here. It's all blank as you can see. And I have a list of products, default quantity and the price, and we'll use that to build this order form. And I'll show you how to modify that on this selectable products where you can select them. So to start with, we need to determine if this is blank. And so we're just gonna say if this is blank, we want to display one value, which would be the product and the quantity. Otherwise, we'll just do the product. And so in this case, Let's go ahead and just do this. And so if we do 10, you can see there's bad product A. So that works great, but we need to fill in if this is blank. So what's our default? And to do that, we're gonna use something called an array literal. And it's these two curly braces. And then in there, we can take our product one, comma, and then we need to change this to B, and that will be our default value. Now, this is the issue you're gonna run into is that circular dependency and it's just because it's referencing that. So the one thing we need to do on this is go to file, settings, calculations, and change it to iterative calculation. And you can change this to one, that's all we need. And then save that. And now you can see it showing up just like this. So at this point, I can just copy and paste this formula down just like that. And so there's our default values. If I type something in here, you can see it overwrites. If I delete it, it resets. Now I'm gonna show you how to do, I did a little conditional formatting, so that we could tell if something was typed in, because the one thing is, if I type in 15, uh, let's go to this one, because I didn't add it on this one. If I type in 15, it's not obvious that I've typed something in. And so you may want to set some kind of formatting so you can tell that it's not the default value. And then to finish up this form, I'm just going to use a little X lookup on our product and look in our, that one automatically selected the wrong one for me. So on this X lookup, we're looking at product A. We want to look in column A here and then return the price. And then I'm just gonna add one more thing here and it's the missing value. So if nothing comes back, we'll just return a blank. And then at this point, I'm gonna copy this and then paste again values only, or formula only. I mean. And then finally, I'm just gonna do if product is blank, we'll do nothing. Otherwise, we'll do price times quantity. And now we can drag that one down, formula only, and there's our values. So now if I reset, you can see it's like that. And then this one is just a sum of that column. So that's how you set up a basic form like this. And then this one I dragged all the way down. So if I add another product, and let's say default quantity of one, we can come back here and there it is, just like that. And then if I change it to 500, for example, it changes it there. So whatever we set here, we can also edit the prior ones we had in here and I'll set those just like that. All right, so let me show you how to do this conditional formatting real quick. So let me delete this rule first, and then we'll build it from scratch. So what I did is selected this, and then if you have this open, you can hit another rule. Otherwise, you can go to format, and conditional formatting. And then what we're gonna do here is change it to whatever color you want, and we're going to go to custom formula, and then what we're gonna do, first of all, is and, and I'm gonna add a dollar sign to D, because I want it to only apply to this column, because we're gonna to refer to that product as well. So we're gonna say, if it's not blank, and let's do reverse first. So what we're gonna, so what we're gonna end up doing is matching this value. So that's gonna, again, be dollar sign D6. And we want to find, the original qual the original quantity. So what was the default quantity? If it matches that, 
let's go ahead and return it yellow and then we'll flip it around. So the way we're going to do that is just like we did over here, we're going to use the XLOOKUP and then we're going to do that C6. And again, I had a dollar sign before to lock it to that column. And then here we can't do a direct reference to that product like we did here. We have to use this indirect method inside this conditional formatting. And then here I'm going to do products A to A. And so that's the first part. That's our reference column and then our return column. And I'm going to change that to B. And then to finish a match, we do zero and then I can close that out. And so let's pull this out here just so we can see that formula. And so there's that match. And so we're matching that XLOOKUP here. And actually, I need to put this here. So I got one more. Go ahead and change that real quick. All right. So that's giving us a match on everything that matches. So let's hit done just for now. And if we change this to 10, that should unhighlight. So right now, this is the reverse. And so now to flip this, so we want to only highlight if it's not matching. What we're going to do here is wrap this with is an A and close that out like that. And now if we change this, now it's highlighting. So this gives us a quick visual indicator that it got changed. All right, so we're done with that one. So let's look at selectable products. So what I did here is let me go ahead and delete this drop down real quick and let me just delete the rest of these real quick as well so first of all let's add this drop down so select drop down drop down from a range and select that product column and then i'm going to change this to an arrow just to look like that instead of the chip and so that gives us our product now one thing to keep in mind, so on this one, if you notice, my formula is here to the left of my quantity field. And so the way these work is it anchors to the top left cell. So you can take one formula and feed to the right and feed down, but you can't feed to the left or up. And so because of that, when we go here, we're actually manually selecting our products. We can't use this as our formula like we do here. So if you notice here, I swapped quantity and price. So that way I can use price to feed quantity. Because if we had quantity over here, like we did here, we can't put the formula here that will feed back to here because it won't go to the left. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Whether you're setting up an order form or have you're setting up your defaults, then that's how that will work. So what we're going to do here is something pretty similar to this, but we're going to use this X lookup. So we can just start with, first of all, what's our price? And so we can just do an XLOOKUP here and select our product and then our price. And there we go, there's our price. You can probably also add that there as well. So this is great, but now we need to add that quantity. And so we're gonna do the same thing like we did before. If, and this would be E, six is equal to blank. We'll show this. Otherwise, we're going to do our double thing here. So right now we only have one. And so now we need to do a comma. And so I don't think I explained this before, but in this array literal, a comma is what separates columns and a semicolon is what separates rows. And so if you're, you can build a full on table in this with columns and rows. But since we're just doing two cells here, we're just going to use that comma here. And then here we want to change this to B on the second one. And then I actually flip this here because if it's blank, I want it to fill. Otherwise, I'll add that. So there we go. Now if I put 10 here, that'll update. So now this one, I can go ahead and pull that down. Formula only. There we go. And I can add my if this is blank do nothing otherwise price times quantity and i can copy this formula down here just like that so now whatever product i select it's going to pull in that 
default quantity, so product F, 1, and 25. I'll also do a little quick formatting of this whole column here. And then if I switch this, this will go to that. So if we want to add the same thing here, I'm just going to walk you quickly through on this conditional formatting. So it's going to look almost identical here. We're just going to slightly tweak these columns. So I'm just going to show you and, and this is going to be E6 is not equal to blank. And that's what that's doing is making sure these don't match. And then we're going to do, we'll go ahead and build it from scratch again. So match, and we're going to do E6. And then we're going to do our X lookup. This will be C6. And then our indirect products. And then our indirect again. Or second column. And I accidentally did a typo here. It's supposed to be A to A, not A to B. And then we're going to do our match there. That should be good. Looks like they're highlighting. We change this. That is working correctly. So now we just need to change that to is an A. And there we go. So now we added it there. And if we type in, it highlights to show that we manually overwrote it. All right, so that is it for today's video. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. As always, have a great day.